up, Homestead Homies? This is Dr. with Doug and Stacy, and I'm Stacy. And today we are going to learn how to soak our flour and grains. Okay, guys, so we did a video a few days ago about soaking your beans and your nuts and your seeds and your flowers and your grains. And we had a lot of response to that, a lot of comments, a lot of questions. So I'm going to address some of those questions and comments, and I'm going to show you how to soak some flour. And actually, today, Doug and I, I'm going to do uh, give you a soaked pancake recipe that you might want to try, which is just phenomenal and yummy, yummy, yummy. And they're very, very dense and, and fluffy and thick. So um, I want to go ahead and do that in just a little bit. But first, I kind of want to talk about some of the different um, acid mediums that you're going to use to help soak these flours and grains because by using these different acid mediums it's going to help break down the anti-nutrients in these grains that cause you know digestive problems um, and it's harder for the, the body to break it down and through the soaking process when we're going to use either um, like a yogurt, a kefir, a buttermilk, uh, apple cider vinegar, raw apple cider vinegar, lemon juice, whey, those things are going to help it get through that process to break down those anti-nutrients that help you not be able to absorb your calcium and your magnesium and your iron and your copper and your zinc um, because they have not been soaked to let go of these phytates and the phytates are probably one of the biggest ones that people talk about that really um, wreak havoc on your body and over time can cause a lot of issues like autoimmune problems and um, diseases and a lot of um, digestive problems. So through doing this soaking process, and it's been done for thousands of years, cultures have been doing it, um, and they have thrived and lived wonderfully. Um, my grandmother did it. Uh, I used to have in my house these little cheesecloths and these bowls, um, just with towels on them all over. She'd make yogurt, she'd soak her bulgur wheat, her crack wheat, um, and the wheat berries and she would have these around all the time and I never thought anything about it and I got older and I didn't even you know do anything that she did and now that I'm learning um, this is so very important there's been a couple generations here in our lifetimes that have just totally forgot about soaking you talk to some of maybe your grandparents or your great-grandparents and people used to soak their grains all the time and what happened I mean we still need to because we need to break down the phytates that coat these seeds and these grains um, to help them from germinating um, and break them down. So what I'm going to do is show you um, how to do that a couple different ways. Last night, I went ahead and took two cups of flour. All right. And I used some homemade yogurt that I have. Now, if you guys don't have access to raw milk, um, if you're going to get yogurt at the store, Make sure it does not have any additives, any extra ingredients. It just needs to be like milk. It doesn't want to have any other, um, like carrageenan, some any type of processed things, anything else. It just needs to be milk. So make sure it doesn't have a lot of junk in it. So I use two cups of yogurt to two cups of flour. Now the flours that you're using, you want to make sure that they're whole grain type flours. The best way to, of course, do your flours is to grind them yourself, but some people can't do that. So if you don't, make sure they're whole grains. You want a, a, a good whole wheat flour, um, you want spelts, you want buckwheat, you want um, some of the ancient grains like kamut flour or um, einkorn, um, you know, amaranth. Any of these different kind of flours will be phenomenal, um, and that's what you want to use. This is a, a whole wheat flour. I've let it soak. It's been soaking maybe about 15 hours or so. So um, I'm ready to go ahead and finish up my recipe with this. Now when I'm doing these, I'm going to do soaked pancakes. Um, the good thing is, is there's already soaking. You only have to put a few more ingredients in there and then you can go ahead and, and then go ahead and, and cook the recipe. But before I want to do that, let me show you something else. I'm going to make something a little bit later and I'm going to show you how you can soak your flour in other type of things. Some people may be gluten, or not gluten, um, dairy, um, or lactose intolerant. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how you can just use filtered water in your flour, and then you're going to need to use one of the acid mediums. It's either going to be your lemon juice or your apple cider vinegar because those don't have any um, dairy in them. Um, 
and I'm going to go ahead and use the apple cider vinegar. Sometimes the lemon juice, and it depends, and you have to, you know, see what works for you and if it bothers you, but lemons sometimes have that lemony flavor. So whatever you're cooking, like I would maybe want to put the lemon juice more into my rice as opposed to my flour, because um, if I'm cooking something, the lemony flavor might accent my rice. But the apple cider vinegar, generally you can't, you, you're not going to be able to taste it. So I'm going to go ahead and put about two tablespoons of the apple cider vinegar in my two cups of water. So it's just really easy to know that if I have a cup of a liquid, I'm going to have a cup of an acid medium, or a cup, a, t a tablespoon. So a tablespoon per cup. So two cups of filtered water to two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. I'm just going to pour it in my flour like that. And then once it's poured, I'm going to just kind of stir it up like so, get it all blended up in there. And the water that I used was warm water. I had made some tea earlier and it had kind of cooled. So the warm water is going to kind of get the process of breaking down the phytates because wheat flour has a lot of phytates in it. So you want to break that all down. So it's going to soak it up. I'm going to let this set all day long. Same thing here, I'm going to cover it, put it in a warm place, and then it's ready. Now, and then you can bake your bread, you can, you know, do whatever you want to make with it. Now, let me show you one other thing here. I have some rice. This is, this is some jasmine rice. And the same thing, this is a type of a grain. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and put my acid medium, let's say I'm going to do my lemon juice. I have a new bottle. So I'm going to put my, my, there's two cups in here, so I'm going to do two cups of my, or two tablespoons of my acid medium. Okay. So here's my two tablespoons. One, two, and then I'll get some filtered water. Put my two cups of filtered water in there. All right, and then I'm going to let this soak. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put this, I'm going to let it go all day long, and then later on tonight, I'm going to go ahead or um, make some white, to make some jasmine rice. Um, what you can do with this is once it goes, you know how rice, it gets really cloudy. So I might let this go a few hours, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to strain it. I have, this is my sprouting jar, and I kind of like to use these because I can just go like this. And then the water just comes out, and it's very simple. And then I could go ahead and, you know, fill it up, fill it up with some more water, like so. And then rinse it. So you might want to rinse it a couple times. Now, we had question about beans, about the, when you're soaking your beans. Beans, when the water, it kind of gets kind of icky. So you might want to rinse them a couple times um, and then go ahead and put the beans in your container and then pick one of your acid mediums to put in there with it. And they're asking if they, every time they rinse it, if they should put the acid medium back in there. Um, I do, you don't have to, um, but that's just one thing I do. If I'm going to let it soak for six hours, my beans, and then I'm going to um, rinse it, I'm going to put a little bit more of that in there and let it soak again um, and replace it. But once you do it one time, and if you don't want to do it anymore, then that's fine. I don't think you don't need to. Um, another question that you get is, let's say I'm soaking oatmeal, or I'm soaking my flour, or I'm soaking um, some chia seeds, or I'm, you know, I'm soaking whatever you're soaking. Uh, do I have to rinse my um, flour or grain that I'm doing? So here, you know, it gets kind of goopy, kind of like, you know, dough or clay. So you don't need to, once it gets the liquid in there and it releases it, it kind of neutralizes it. So you really don't need to rinse it once it's been um, soaking like that. So um, that was just a question that we got a lot of. So once it's soaked, so let's say you're soaking your oatmeal or you're soaking some chia seeds or something like that. Once they've been soaked, it releases that and it neutralizes it and you don't have to worry about rinsing that again. Because
because I know chia seeds are pretty gelatinous when you're doing them and it's kind of hard sometimes. Um, and same thing a lot of times with oatmeal, it kind of gets flappy and, and same with flour. So you don't need, need to rinse it. Okay, so let's move on to making some soaked pancakes. Okay, so now it's time to make our um, soaked pancakes. And let me get a little FYI for a lot of you guys. If you've never soaked your, um, your flour, and like I did this in yogurt, you can do it in buttermilk, you can do it you know, in kefir, um, it will give it a little bit more of a sour taste. Um, we love it because this is what I do. Like if I'm going to bake cookies or something, I'll soak my flour and then I use whey, I use my yogurt, and whenever I'm doing everything, Doug's just used to it. We, I've always soaked my things in like yogurt and, and whey. So um, it might have a little sour taste to it if you're not, you know, used to it. And the thing that's really good about it is, you, you know, you can go ahead and put bananas in these pancakes. You can put berries in these pancakes. You can put cinnamon in the pancakes you know, with the maple syrup and, you know, a lot of different things like that to kind of help it. Um, especially kids or something about children, they seem to really like these pancakes and they're very healthy and they're very filling and they're very digestible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stir this up. And the thing is, is from it sitting like this overnight in that, it gives it that, um, it'll give it, gives it that fluffiness, sort of like you're putting even kind of like a yeast into it. All right, now I'm gonna put, everything's two, two cups of flour that we had and then it's soaked in two cups of yogurt, kefir, or buttermilk. And then if you're lactose intolerant, you're gonna go ahead and use um, water, filtered water. Now, little note on the filtered water. I got it out of our sink. We do not have chlorinated water here. We have a 3,000 gallon rainwater catchment system that goes through many filters before it comes into our house. So make sure that you are using good filtered water, not chlorinated water from the city. All right, and then here, I'm gonna put a nice couple teaspoons of baking powder, and then I'm gonna put about a, a little bit of pink Himalayan sea salt, or you can use an unrefined sea salt in there, and two tablespoons of butter, melted butter. And then I'm going to put a little honey in there. Honey, honey. Raw, unfiltered honey right from our beehives. Okay. So I'm going to put a couple tablespoons of that in there. All right. And then I'm going to mix this all up. Now, when you're baking, okay, let's say you're soaking your flour, you're making your bread, or you're making your um, cookies, or whatever you're baking or making with it, and you need it to be more liquidy, then just go ahead and add more filtered water to it, okay? But this is the perfect consistency right now, because I might turn my pancakes. And then, two eggs. So, I'm going to mix this all up. When this is all mixed up, I'm going to go ahead and heat up my cast iron pan with some real butter, raw butter if you can get it, make it yourself or have access to it, that would be the best. And then another little note on butter, here's our butter, um, is in the grocery store, make sure you're trying to get, you know, grass-fed butter because that way you're gonna get the most nutrients out of it and it's gonna be the best for you. Um, a good brand that you can buy a lot of and you find it at a lot of stores is called Kerrygold if you don't have access to um, grass-fed butter and that's a, a good brand too is the Kerrygold. But just look on the label and make sure that it does say you know, grass-fed because that is huge, especially on something like this that you're gonna cook and you want a good healthy fat. All right, so my pancakes are ready. Now, this is a lot of pancakes for Doug and I. So let me tell you something else you can do with this batter. 
I know people who get this batter and what they'll do is they'll make one batch because you do have to let it, you know, sit overnight and it takes a little time. A little preparation is all it takes. So when you are um, done, let's say I want to use half of this, I'm just going to put it in a container, put it in the ice box and just let it set um, till the next day and maybe make something. Maybe you had breakfast with the pancakes and then tomorrow night you want to have, um, you know, eggs and pancakes for dinner. So you could do that. And then I know people who also will also, if you have leftovers, especially with kids, you can take these and you can even freeze the cooked ones. So this is, it's just a marvelous, because it does hold its texture pretty good. All right, these look yummy. I know Doug's hungry. All right, I will be right back. I'm gonna get my grill started and then we'll get cooking. Okay, so now it's time. I'm gonna put it on the grill. All right, so now I'm going to make my pancakes. Now, a lot of times with these pancakes, um, they, they'll take maybe a little longer to cook than regular pancakes. Now, I mean, not a whole lot, but just like if you're used to like, what you're normally used to making regular pancakes, it might take a little bit more. All right. And then what I wanted to talk to you guys about while these are cooking is um, we were talking about the flour and flour is usually made when you're talking about the whole wheats and they say the whole wheats and the whole grains are good for you but if they're not sp if they're not sprouted or soaked um, it doesn't it's not able to break down the phytates because everyone got into this kick about eating um, and buying whole wheat bread well whole wheat bread that you buy at the store is not it has not been soaked or sprouted so that's why it's really hard to digest and especially for young children it's 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 a lot harder for them to digest and can cause problems as they get older and may offer you know and they may even have digestion problems or not their immune system problems so soaking grain whole grains for young children is crucial very very important so if you guys when you're buying your bread and you can find this anywhere try to buy sprouted wheat bread it's more accessible now right now um i know aldi is carrying sprouted wheat bread now ezekiel is a great sprouted wheat bread and there's a lot of other brands out now that they're offering that are um, sprouted wheat and those are going to be much more digestible uh, you know uh, a much lower glycemic in index and just so much better for you all right so now i flipped a couple i'm waiting for the other one and uh looking forward to getting that outdoor kitchen so excited and they smell good hungry hungry all right, getting ready for fall. Now this would be a good version if you guys also had other ways to do them. I mean, you could do pumpkin um, pancakes too. That would be scrumptious. So you can maybe, maybe when you're soaking them, you can soak them in some pumpkin too, along with your um, acid medium. And then put some more in your actual recipe. You could do pumpkin bread, but the pumpkin would be phenomenal, phenomenal. Okay, I'll see you guys inside. Okay, so now it's done. I'm getting ready to eat it. I'm gonna eat a little bit of this before Doug comes in. <laughs> so I'm gonna put some maple syrup on my pancakes. Not regular syrup. You don't want that high fructose corn syrup. Make sure it's maple syrup, okay? And then try it. I'm sure it tastes great. I've already sampled a couple when I was cooking them. They are good. And just a little reminder for you guys is um, September 22nd is the webinar with Paul and the American Sun Oven. And um, go ahead and sign up for that because there's going to be some cool things. There's 13 different ways that you can work um, and use a Sun Oven, um, cooking a turkey and a lot of other neat things. So the link is below. So go ahead and check that out and maybe sign up and register for that. Mmm. Yummy, yummy, yummy. And I went ahead and put some eggs on top. How many of you guys put eggs on top of your pancakes? We do. We love it. All right. This is Dr. with Doug and Stacy. Check us out on Instagram and Twitter. And I will be talking to you guys soon.